Today, we're going to review the top five kingdoms and rise of kingdoms as of the end of 2023, because I can't believe we're actually approaching the end of the year. So stick around in this video for the best kingdoms in the game and a few thoughts on which kingdoms might rise up to be new contenders among the top five powerhouse kingdoms. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chess Cool Gaming, and look, I like to keep tabs on the best kingdoms in the game, and everybody likes to know, where are they? How strong are they? And who might be a kingdom that rises up to contest them? And we've said many times in the past, to be one of these top five kingdoms, you have to be able to beat some of the other top five kingdoms that already exist to sort of climb your way into this list. So we'll go through these kingdoms in no particular order, although it is intentional that I have 1960 on the screen first. Uh, and you can use the timestamps in the description to jump to any of the kingdoms that you want to see some information about. Now, a part of where we're pulling information from for today's video is rockboard.com. They are not sponsoring this video, but they do request that, uh, you know, content creators declare when we're citing their data. And I am getting a look at the data from rockboard.com. So there's a couple pieces of information we're going to look at. We're going to look at power. We're going to look at kill points. We might also talk about dead troops. And that's why we've got to have 1960 on the screen. The top 300 players by power in 1960 have 3.1 trillion kill points combined. That is actually insane. And as far as their power goes, I mean, you can see they've got 18.2 billion power in GT right now. And if we get a look at MX, MX is sitting at 8.5 billion power. So the majority of their highest power players are consolidated into uh, the main shell. But this is, make no mistake about it, a two alliance kingdom with accounts that generally are running around the clock. And the crazy part about that is that when I went to the Cologne meetup in Germany for Rise of Kingdoms and Call of Dragons this year, I actually met someone who's from 1960, and he very symbolically, and this is kind of a cool gesture, but he said, hey, Chiskul, we are the first alliance in the international Rise of Kingdoms servers in, in 1960 to get a rainbow chest. Would you like to symbolically open one? We are offering this to you as a gesture, right? You can symbolically push the button and open the chest. So I opened his crystal chest for him, right? Or, or I guess it's not a crystal chest, it's a rainbow chest. They're the first ones in, in, in the international servers to have gotten that. So the spend level here is completely insane. But the thing that he pointed out to me is that there's a misconception um, about how it is that some of the accounts in 1960 run sort of around the clock. And he said he's just insane. He's literally the only person who's playing his account, and he's on constantly. So, like, respect to the to the folks who uh, put in that amount of dedication. It is insane. Obviously, 1960 as a kingdom has won an absurd amount of Osiris League as well. Um, and they are currently battling in the Grand Prix Tournament. Um, in terms of actually looking at the combined power here, they are 26 Point five billion Imperium power. Now, this data is a little bit old, actually. Um, it looks like it's just a few days old at the time that I'm recording this. So some of these things could have shifted a little bit between, you know, when the data was recorded and, and when this is actually being filmed. But it's close enough to say this kingdom is freaking huge. They are number one for Imperium power, which is just insane. And when you unbound their power... They're still number one at 28.5 billion. So for those that don't know, when you look at the calculation for kingdom uh, strength for matchmaking purposes, they cap players at over 150 million power as exactly 150 million power. So they've got some of those players in uh, 1960. And um, yeah, they're, I mean, they're still number one. Cap the power or don't cap the power, which is really crazy. Um, so let's go to another absolutely insane kingdom on the list, and we've got to go to 1365. And the thing is that, like, we don't actually know who would win between 1960 and 1365 if they went 1v1, 
But if I were betting money, I would probably put it on 1365. And the reason is that pretty sure there's still a four alliance kingdom. And it's just really difficult. Even if you have the highest caliber players in the game with the most active accounts around, it's just difficult to combat the quantity of players at the quality and uh, quantity of uptime that you're going to get from 365. Um, you're looking at 14.5 billion power in JST. BLN sitting next to the temple at 11.3 billion. Over here, you've got, oh, still more JST, just kidding. Uh, JG is sitting at uh, 9.7 billion right now. And over here, we've got OG at 12.7 billion. Now, they just entered into KVK, so uh, the size of these shells is going to be slightly larger. Just keep that in mind as we do this evaluation. But the thing is that, like, you know, if you're 150 million power or 50 million power, you can still only field, if you max your tech, seven marches, right? So having so many alliances is actually insane. And when we look at the stats for 1365, looking at their top 300 by power does them a true disservice. So by power right now, they are number three at 25.2 billion Imperium power. Um, and in terms of their kills, they are number two. Um, that is 2.5 trillion kill points. But remember, this is only looking at their top 300 players. Bro, they got at least 600 in this kingdom. So, yeah, I mean, that makes a huge difference. Um, in terms of looking at how they've performed in the last four months, this is kind of an interesting statistic. Right now, 1365 is number five for how they performed in the top four months based on their top 300 players by power. But like I said, this kingdom, looking at the top 300 players by power is really not doing it any justice, which, I mean, I'm not trying to make a pun off the name here, but you can also see that they've got an Osiris League victory locked in here as well for JST. So um, very strong kingdom all around. From here, we go to the next kingdom on the list and you know, maybe I will actually do these in an order. Let's do them in the order of kill points from the top 300 by power. I think that's a great idea. We're already going in that order. So let's talk about the allies of 1365 uh, in this KVK that they're currently in. And that is 2489. Now, 2489 is where Baba is. That's where Fa is. Arvix is here. Um... I have no plans to move my restart account, but if I were relocating it, I would probably go to Baba or uh, Fa and say, hey, you know, I'm friends with them. I'd say, hey, could I join this kingdom? I will spend on Crystal Tech and feel with my restart like a main account and see what they would say if I were picking a kingdom to go to. Um, and there's many good kingdoms to go to, but 2489... Um, has their own really powerhouse Osiris team. In fact, they had four teams in like the top, what was it, 16 or 32 in Osiris League this last season. So they're in a league where they are smashing with a ton of teams. Um, 89 CG is sitting at 14 billion power. We can get a look around here. Remember, they are in KVK, so... Some of these numbers are going to be a little bit inflated. I believe they are a two alliance kingdom. Here they've got a 13.5 billion power alliance. And I think that's pretty much it. I'm not saying they don't have, you know, farm alliances and other stuff going on. Here's uh, another shell that's got an Osiris League win <laughs> to its name. 2.7 billion power, though. I mean, this is a uh, farm alliance, right? Got to be. And then, I mean, you know, and they use the shell for, for arc, right? Uh, what do we have over here? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think, okay, that we already looked at the shell. I think this is just a two alliance kingdom. I mean, I say just, but uh, my alliance is, uh, we have a one alliance kingdom. That's a different model entirely. But two alliance kingdom is a really solid model. And if we look again at that kill point number, it's 2.42 trillion kill points in the top 300 players by power or 24 89. And in terms of their overall power, 
Um, this data is, again, a little bit old, but they were at 25.15 uh, billion Imperium power. Now, the funny thing is that when you remove that constraint on Imperium power, where they limit the size of players at over 150 mil and put them at 150, if you unbound the power of those players, they're actually number three by power um, at uh, 27.5 billion power which is a lot of power a lot of power i mean yeah um they're a very top tier kingdom they've got the punch they need i think they've got the commitment they need i think they have some great folks in leadership over there very strong kingdom currently again number three on the ranks for kills and look if you control the field you control the kvk that's just the reality of how this goes all right so let's go to the next kingdom on the list as ranked by kill points from T4, T5, um, for the top 300 players by power, and that is going to be 1093. And I would say that if I compare 1093 to 365, they're very close in terms of the way they're structured. 1093 is a large kingdom. It's not the two alliance model, last I checked anyways. They're going for big, many alliances, and I would say that... In terms of their leadership's uh, strategy, they are very difficult to beat. Um, I think they are some of the most strategic players among all the kingdoms we've reviewed here. Um, here you see 93P at 11.9 billion. Over here, we've got the Lazy Lions at 12 billion. Over here, you've got the Scuffed Tigers at 13.2 billion with, by the way, their recent Osiris title. And I think they might have a fourth alliance. Maybe they don't, though. Could be a three alliance kingdom. Let's get a look here. Um, 10.3 billion power in the Delirious Dragons. So the difference between, I think, 1093 and 365 is the punch. And I mean, the kill points are actually not that far off, surprisingly. So 1093 is at 2.363 trillion kill points, whereas 365 was at 2.536. So that's actually pretty close. And in terms of total power, I mean, 1093 is fifth for total power at 25 billion for Imperium power. Uncapped, they fall down to seventh, 25.5. Four. So they don't have as much of that like insane top end as some of these other kingdoms do, but they've got a really committed base of players. And my general impression is they're not quite as whaled as some of these other kingdoms, but the to the extent they're not as whaled, they try to make up for that in commitment and strategy. Um, and I would say that they've executed that actually really well. Um, if we go to the final kingdom in the top five, this spot has actually been up for grabs like a number of times, and they're in a tough KVK spot again. In fact, they've got to fight 365 and 2489, which is going to be a tall order. That kingdom is 1846. 1846 has been consistent. They were at one point the largest kingdom in the game. I think the biggest criticism of... Uh, their recruiting strategy uh, that ultimately backfired a little bit is that they just brought in as many people as they could um, that were below a certain amount of power that wouldn't impact their migrations. And they ended up with just a lot of people that were there for the wins. And they had a little rebuilding period after they took a loss, but they actually rebuilt and that's hard to do. Um, so credit where credit is due in terms of the number of kills they have right now. Um, they are, let's see, I've got power up. Um, they've got 20, uh, no, 2.154 trillion kill points. 2.154 trillion kill points. So they're just behind 1093 at 2.363. They have 2.154. Wow. And in terms of power, 1846 is actually number two right now. Um, they're at 26.2 billion power. Uh, if you unbound that power, so top 300 players count as their actual power number, they are fourth at 27.2 billion power. 
Um, alliances, they've got WIB at 16.1. It's actually quite meaningful. Sin is at 9.9. RIS is at 12.8. I think they are a three alliance kingdom. They, if I, I mean, they used to be like an eight alliance kingdom. Like it was actually insane how large they were. It, it was actually insane. Um, they're, they're not there and no kingdom really is anymore because it's just not really possible to build a kingdom that large anymore. You used to be able to, the migration rules were different. You could get away with it. You just can't anymore. Uh, and so they are a top tier kingdom. I don't think they have a, uh, title to their name actually. In terms of Osiris League, I could be wrong there, but in terms of members, they do have Makote, <laughs> and he's a champion IRL, so uh, I actually don't follow football or soccer, depending on you know what you want to call it, but uh, actual superstar IRL here, Makote, the footballer, uh, and his commitment is, is just completely insane in KVK, by the way. Kill points at 40 billion, totally insane. Um, but you know, Arvix and Baba and some of the other personalities in these other kingdoms and Fa also have some just like really insane stats as well. So, um, but Makote always throws down, man. He's got, I think the most dead troops in the game, but I don't know if Yoda recently passed him. I'd have to go get a look at that. And that's maybe topic for a separate video. I have fought against 1846 a number of times and their commitment is super real. They do go for the win and, um, they're going to have a tough situation fighting against, like I said, 2489 and also 1365. They are allied, by the way, with 1175, which brings us to the part of the video where we talk about who might be candidates for like going onto this list. And I actually am not sure. I mean, right now, 1175 is one of the strongest kingdoms by power, um, but I don't know if their activity is there to really get into that top five. I would say if they win this KVK, then like that's absolutely the conversation we're having is who did they bump out of the top five? If, if 1175 is able to get a dub here, allied with uh, 1846, hey, yo, that's gonna be pretty exciting. They're 24.6 billion power capped, but they're number two uncapped at almost 28 billion power just behind 1960 at 28.5 billion power. And in terms of their kills, like, are they that far off? Um, 1175 for kills is 10th overall at 1.4 trillion kill points in their top 300 by power. And so this is where you really see the difference, right? Like, you've got 1846 at 2.15, almost 2.2 trillion kill points, and then you've got like that your next best option is 1034 um who just came off of a really tough uh you know loss situation against 1960 in a 3v5 where i mean it was three imperiums versus five imperiums and 1960 and their allies pulled off the win which is actually insane um on the topic of 1960s allies um also top contenders would potentially oh gosh there's so many things to talk about like by the way, multiple billion power accounts are, are in here. Mimi's accounts, really insane. Um, I just, yeah, I mean, it's totally insane, right? Um, but we, we talk about the allies here of uh, 1960 and their last KVK, 2377, okay? Also has multiple billion power players, uh, Wild Lion and Mr. Hope. They are, I mean, a contender as well, right? Like if they were to fight one of the top five kingdoms and knock them off the list, then like, yeah, or I like, all right. They they would be positioned to go into that top five. Um, they've got their Osiris winning banner over here. And I'd have to find, you know, Wild Lion and Mr. Hope, but they, they I mean, they dropped a ton of power in this last KVK. Um, and I believe it, wasn't it 1671 was another ally here? We could show them just very briefly. But I think 1671, I mean, they had a tough situation to be in, fighting against a bunch of folks um, on the right-hand side of the map. Uh, they, you know, I think understandably needed support against all the kingdoms they were up against, and, and they got that support uh, and were able to pull out the win here. So a lot of really strong kingdoms to watch, which brings us, by the way, to my kingdom. Let's just talk about that really quickly um, in terms of what we're up to right now. Um, now, we're currently in KVK, and we're also 
spread out for arc and also have lost a lot of power from kvk so <laughs> yeah we're we're at 12.8 uh billion power right now and we started the kvk at t over 20 billion after training for kvk um my kingdom is currently 11th for kill points we picked up over 200 and i want to say 25 or almost 250 billion kill points with just one alliance worth of players which is kind of nuts so we're 11th overall for kill points in the top 300 uh by power and that is 1.4 trillion kill points we're actually just behind 1175 in terms of kp but remember we're a one alliance kingdom so we're doing that with literally 150 players in terms of the last four months we actually are number four for kp gain which is kind of surprising um, they list us at 359, almost 360 uh, billion kill points picked up. So that must represent the fact that we've been queuing for KVKs pretty quickly. Some of that has to be from the last KVK, and some of that is from this current KVK that we're in. And in terms of power, I mean, we'll kind of see where we're at once we get our troops back. I, I don't even know if we would register in 2605 in that top power situation oh yeah we are i mean w dude people mocked us like ab about our imperium status but like guys like i, I don't know what to tell you like we're not <laughs> we're not imperium right now we only have one alliance like it, it turns out that having two alliances is actually a pretty big deal so anyways if you wanted to join us in 2605 we are actually recruiting right now we have a very small number of spots but they are also really highly coveted because, I mean, look, when you stack a one alliance kingdom with, you know, players like, and I'll show just a few of them that would still register in the top players by power. But we have currently Yoda, Cyborg, Peppa, um, Pony. These guys, I mean, they were all over, I want to say 600 million power before we started fighting, which is really insane. Yoda, I mean, he was 1.4, 1.5 billion power. So anyways, uh, the advantage of going into a one alliance kingdom like we have in 2605 is that you get a lot of gold chests and that translates to a lot of speed ups. And so you get to focus on other things with your account. I mean, I looked at this pretty recently and like I've already got another treasure of blue crystal. I don't know, man, like <laughs> you get a lot of these, right? And so that has to translate to fielding a lot. And if it doesn't translate to fielding a ton and using a lot of speed ups for field fighting, then like you're not a, you're not the right fit for the kingdom. So if you're the kind of player who wants to be super, super active um, and is going to field fight a lot, then this is a pretty cool place to be because you can get tons of speed ups that you need. And then you can focus your spending on other things like Look, I focus my spending pretty much exclusively on armaments at this point. And then I'll go and use gems, for example, in the VIP shop to get, you know, more speed ups and materials every week, right? Um, so check out that link, burnruz.com. I'll include that in the description and pinned comment. If you are a crazy field fighter, we're totally open to like a younger account making their way into the kingdom. Um, but, you know, you have to like dem demonstrate that you are like really super active in the field. I mean, I think, you know, I, I want to say the the average recruit last time we did a round of recruiting was like 8 billion kill points at least. It was probably higher than that. So anyways, if you want to join us, burnres.com. Hope you'll consider it. We have a very small number of spaces uh, for those that are interested in, in joining us. And, you know, one, one last thing I'll add that, that I just thought was kind of interesting is that there's only so many kingdoms at the top. 1960, 1846, 365, 1093, 2489. Like if those guys want good fights, they basically have to fight each other all the time. And what I thought was really interesting when I went to the meetup in Germany is when I met this dude from 1960, you know, people people try to mock us all the time. They're like, oh yeah, you know, look, it's, look, you, you know, 60 SW, look at you. But like, 1960 is actually super hyped that we're doing this project because they want kingdoms like us to potentially go and fight that they think are actually going to show up in the field and 
in their own words, they, I think what he said was like, not just run the entire time. <laughs> so like, I don't know, man, it's, it's actually kind of encouraging to hear 1960 say like, yes, we want your kingdom to grow and be successful in part because we want to fight you. So subscribe if you haven't already, if you're looking for more information about the top kingdoms in the game, I update this list pretty regularly. And alternatively, if you were interested in the top players in the game, I'll look hard in the end screen for the last time I did an evaluation of the players that have the most kills and maybe even, I think I took a look at the most dead troops, which by the way, at this point, I'm pretty sure it's just Yoda for the most dead troops. Like, uh, maybe not actually. I don't know who it is. I'd have to go and look. 300 million tier five dead troops. I mean, bro, that is insane. All right. Check those cards in the end screen, and until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.